Welcome on my YouTube channel. Today in this episode I will try to modify this very old uh, UR microphone. It's uh, actually it's made in Germany and uh, as, you as you see here there is a switch on it because this microphone is, is using the 5-pin DIN uh, connector to speak directly with some kind of UR uh, field tape recorder. So I bought this on eBay with a couple of other microphones in, in, a, in a very nice case for 4 euro. So I already cleaned it out and I opened it and I find inside a very nice uh, microphone capsule with some kind of weird um, construction. And I already did a hole on the end because on the end, of course, I want to, to install a uh, normal uh, XLR uh, connector. So this is how it will be looks uh, on the end. The microphone capsule inside this looks to me really decent, but all the rest uh, <laughs> of the microphone, so it's everything is, uh, as you see, and as you hear, it's plastic, but the top part is metal and also this frame is full metal. And uh, also there is a hole on the bottom, so it can be a really nice uh, tonality microphone. So let me open it for a second for you guys. So what we can find inside, this is the switch. Uh, what is used originally to do a mute with uh, the original uh, UR uh, field tape recorder. And the other switch, it's, it's doing like mono stereo, I now have clue. The red coming across the capacitor and is coming out. And uh, from uh, after the capacitor, we have here this switch and from that switch this line is coming back to this coil and from the coil it's it's connected to here so i'm really confused what this microphone actually is doing with these uh, switches and why i have here uh, three cable so let's uh, open the top part and you can see this this microphone capsule is it looks to me really uh, decent quality only this top part is somehow is not uh, I'm really not uh, like it but uh, this we can take it off no problem so this is this uh, top part and as you see, it has some kind of shape of angle and this angle is coming exactly to the side of the bottom part of the membrane. So I think, tell me if I'm wrong, so I think the sound waves can come from the, from the front, of course, but if it's coming from the background and then it will hit this plastic and from this plastic it's mirrored into the back of the microphone. So I now have clue what will happen if I will remove this uh, plastic part and I'm really not sure why I have here three uh, wire. On the bottom of, of this microphone capsule, I have a really hard uh, foam and uh, immediately on the side of the inside of the foam I have again uh, a part of uh, plastic from this uh, capsule. So my plan is to, to, to modify this uh, suspension here to make sure this microphone somehow will will almost levitate inside in this uh, huge uh, uh, microphone case. First, I will uh, 
disconnect this microphone because I want to make a kind of uh, uh, measurement here uh, what's going on with the uh, with the coils inside in this capsule so I did uh, uh, reverse engineering on this microphone so I just uh, disconnected from from the cables and uh, I really want to know what's going on with this three uh, leg on this uh, microphone because in other microphones if you see three connector on a microphone the other microphones it's uh, it's uh, built like uh, you have one coil you have other coil but the, um, the sound is only generated by this coil and this coil is uh, wired opposite sorry if, if I didn't draw like this so what is doing in other microphones not in, not in our case uh, it's actually very simple almost all the microphone uh, it's opened from the front um, for the sound and also for, for, uh, for the hum noises so when the hum noise is coming into this kind of construction microphone then it will generate for you here a hum noise but on, on this wire will generate a 180 degree um, off phase uh, voltages so then later on in your electronic or in your uh, microphone these two you can connect together by maybe by capacitors or uh, or uh, maybe by resistors and then uh, then just the capacitors whatever and this is how other microphones with three or four leg it's it's killing the hum noise but in our case we have a other kind of construction they did a small metal hose around the microphone which is totally closed and don't forget this is also sitting behind this really heavy uh, and massive uh, uh, metal hose so this is the configuration with this UR microphone so the old hose maybe if I drawing like this maybe you will understand more so all the house is grounded this is the middle uh, pin the gold pin it's running through cross this uh, small PCB here you can see so the gold is coming through tack directly to the end and uh, the, um, the red one is coming across this uh, capacitor to the middle leg but between these two here you can find this MS switch so it's not doing mono stereo how I think <laughs> on the beginning because this capsule it's uh, not a stereo capsule it's uh, just only one coil uh, capsule so What's going on here with this uh, uh, easy, simple electronic? So let me demonstrate to you um, by some kind of uh, application what you can find easily on, on the internet and also here on this uh, microphone modification you will see why it's so important the inside impedance of your microphone preamplifier. So a couple of uh, videos ago I did, um, I did uh, a review on the Artvoice channel uh, microphone preamp and if you remember the Artvoice channel microphone preamp it can go down from uh, 150 ohm up to 3 kilo ohm. And now in this uh, internet application I will demonstrate to you what's going on with this old microphone 
and uh, what's going on in the Artwash channel in different combinations. This application you can find on the uh, internet uh, by this uh, address in uh, fasta.com per circuit. So what is this actually? It's a Java based, really simple circuit simulator and I really like uh, this tool because with this uh, online uh, application I easily can deep, like pre-develop my circuits. So let me demonstrate to you what's going on with this microphone. So this is uh, your microphone, which um, can generate for you uh, the minimum frequency like 10 Hz and the maximum, let's say 20 kilohertz. This simulation, it's contain uh, a spectrum analyzer. So let me disconnect the capacitor and um, add a simple wire between this. So now you can see here uh, when you don't have a capacitor after your microphone the whole frequency spectrum it's, is just contain a 4 dB uh, signal decreasing because of the input impedance of your um, mic preamp. So, but if you place here a capacitor, let's say in our case now this is one micro, then you can see here with the one uh, microfarad capacitor we will lose so the the normal lose signal losing is 4 dB, so let's find the 7 dB point when you lose 3 dB. So let's find back the minus 7 dB. It's about uh, somewhere here. So now you can see the low pass frequency is already 100 Hz. But what's going on if we... if we switch on this switch. Now you can see what's going on with the signal. So if you switch on this switch, on this microphone, then your coil is start to, to eat up more energy from your microphone signal, but only on a low frequency. So this is without coil, so minus 7 dB, it's about 100 Hz. So looks, look how it's changing when we switch on this coil. Let's find now this minus 7 dB. You see on, on the top frequencies it's almost nothing is changed, it's just a really tiny 0.2 dB is changing, but look what's going on with the higher frequency, uh, lower frequencies. So minus seven, what I want to find, look, one kilohertz. Only switch on this coil into the circuit on one kilohertz. You can see here now, the coil is, is start to eat energy, but on the higher frequencies, you see the electrons are not moving. So let's go down to the 80, the original 100 hertz. Bang is here. So now we are running on 100 hertz and you can see almost all the energy is eaten up by this tiny coil inside in a mic microphone and nothing signal is going to the input of your amplifier. Let now play with the input impedance of your mic amplifier. Because basically for this microphone all of your amplifier is almost looks like a simple resistor because the first, your uh, mic preamp first stage, it has kind of impedance. So I already set it up this, uh, so the maximum value it only can be 3 ki uh, ki uh, kilo ohm, sorry. But now we are staying 
somewhere, here you can read it, somewhere one kilo ohm. So look what will happen with the filter curve here if your amplifier is changing to the high. No, not too much, but look, the signal is growed up, of course, because there is really high resistance now, so we are not losing too much uh, power from the original power, but look what's going on. So minus 2 dB, and uh, we have to find the minus 5 dB. Minus 5, look, the whole low pass filtering is modified because your microphone also has kind of inside uh, impedance. So look, let's say here it's exactly 5 dB, 40 Hz. So if your microphone preamp it has too high impedance, input impedance, then your filtering solution in your microphone, because all the microphone has some kind of filtering solution, if it's too high, then your low pass filtering is going down to lower frequency. One positive thing with the high impedance uh, amplifiers, you are not losing signal on a higher frequencies. Look, you just lose only 2 dB, but if your input impedance, let's say, too low, then you lose a lot of power on all the frequencies, we're talking about 32 uh, dB, but your low cut frequency is going to the other direction. So let's find the minus 35 dB point. 32, 33, 35, 270 Hz. So the lowest impedance, meaning higher low cut frequency. Higher impedance, meaning lower low cut frequency. So if, if I will switch on this uh, switch in this microphone, then I, of course, I will lose some kind of power, but my low cut filtering is starting on much more higher frequencies. So then this microphone basically is coming for speech microphone. So let's find the frequency on the average uh, value of the input impedance, which is around 1K let's say in 1k okay we, we're almost there so uh, around 1k of input impedance i will get low pass filtering inside in this microphone uh, around so minus four i have to arrive to minus seven around one kilohertz so everything below one kilohertz will be cut down like uh, uh, like f uh, four and a half dB per octave or something like this. So, yeah. But what I will do with the other switch, because mainly I want to use this microphone for uh, uh, report uh, movies. So my other idea is to do a mute uh, fu function with this switch and I will choose much more lower resistance for this switch because uh, why I want to keep some kind of ohm after the the switch because I don't want to do a shortcut uh, on a input of the amp so this is why I will position uh, from the amp point of view after the capacitor, but for the microphone it doesn't matter if I'm doing here a shortcut or not, but for the capacitor it's, 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 it's matter because it can be generate a really high dang bang voltage back, back to my um, amplifier. So around 10 ohm, 
this is what I will do in my uh, microphone. So let's uh, start what will go with uh, 10 ohm here. Almost all the energy, almost all the energy, it's going through this resistor and almost nothing will go through this uh, capacitor to my mic preamp. So, but look, look, it's almost linear, minus 35 dB, uh, less signal, but if I disconnect uh, my switch, then I will get back my original minus 4 dB signal losing. So, this switch will be actually a kind of mute, and the amount of muting will depend on this resistor. So, yeah, with 10 ohm, I will get minus 35 dB. So, that's it, what I will do with this microphone electronically, but I think uh, much more interesting the, the acoustic uh, modifications inside in this uh, capsule holder. So back to the acoustic modification of this microphone. So what I want to do, first I want to make sure this microphone is, is, will somehow levitate inside in this uh, metal case. And um, as I told you guys, in the, in the past they applied this really chunky, heavy, massive plastic-based foam here, but I don't like at all. So what I have now, I'm a pure microphone capsule without this uh, heavy uh, sheety. I have a couple of different uh, uh, type of acoustic uh, foam and uh, maybe you cannot see on the video, but this one, it's, uh, it's a bit soft, but this one, it's much more harder. And as your foam is harder, then also acoustically it's much more high, harder for the higher frequencies. So what we have on the bottom, we have here a lot of holes behind the capsule. So this is it like this. And what I want to uh, get a kind of um, cardioid pattern from this microphone, which is changing with the frequencies. So on the low frequencies, I want to totally kill everything. But on the higher frequencies, I just want to make a, a dumping which is coming from the bag. So my head is here and this is my subject. So when, when I ask, hey, how are you? Thanks, I'm fine. So what you think about this microphone? I think it's a really great microphone. So looks, look what's going on with, uh, with the characteristic. We have here background noises everywhere. Uh, it can be bus coming or uh, train coming or our uh, footsteps or whatever. So with this kind of frequency depend back damping, I will get some kind of uh, noise from the background, but the low frequencies, it will kill itself which is coming from the front and from the back but the high frequencies are not fully so for that I will choose the harder foam and the other reason why I will choose the harder uh, foam is, is that because this harder foam will keep my microphone in a good position and it's, it's applies some kind of force to my microphone to, to uh, hold inside in this uh, metal case. Oh, look, ta-da, almost perfect. 
I just have yeah so now from this side I have a foam which is really hard maybe if I can demonstrate to you by my microphone so now I'm speaking directly into my microphone and now I will speak directly into my microphone across this foam so you you have idea what's going on with this phone oh yeah yeah i have this part here what i really don't like so let me place inside okay so this is how we'll go so now i'm almost ready so let's find this original extra capsule head <laughs> So, if you remember, this is working like collecting a sound from the back. This is why it has this uh, angled shape here. So now if I place here, nothing extraordinary changing, but let me try now, because this plastic, it has a kind of bumper on the front, so <clears throat> actually this we came to to here and this will came to here and I feel uh, too much force from the from the front so but the maybe you can see it through like this but um, you can see the microphone capsule it's kind of levitate in the middle so yeah but what about the wind and what about uh, the this old uh, uh, characteristic from the front because i want to keep the original old kind of characteristic so i don't want to get too much high from this uh, microphone too much high frequencies what I will do now I will apply this much more softer maybe yeah here you can see so this is the two foam and look how was the difference between the two so now I apply a qual amount of pressure and you can see this one is almost not pressurized but the other one it's really easily can uh, pressurize so but it's much more transparent for the sound maybe you can hear like this so this is the sound of this foam now i have to cut again a cycle from this phone and push it down to to the to the front of this grill i'm not always happy with the sound of microphones and with those different kind of foams you really easily can fine-tune your uh, microphones so let's now see what's going on yeah it's almost perfect so place it in uh, front okay oh look beautiful beautiful I want to remove this original ah, this I don't like so now if I place the microphone in you can see it's it has kind of flexibility even in 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 this uh, angle rotation but it's keep the capsule into the middle so let me let me apply like this okay at the moment i don't care this angle because we're still in a labor phase so let me position into the middle and ta-da so now if you look through what how much dirt unbelievable maybe you can see it through um, uh, no you cannot but now <clears throat> the microphone 
it's uh, positioned into the middle and if I move I feel the microphone can move for the really low frequencies so it's kind of uh, kind of mic stand no inside it's like uh, it's like a shock mount so okay this is really you cannot see on a, on a video but the, the the capsule inside it can move so this is the situation no this is my grill this is my grill here is my foam which is deformed like this and this is my back of this grill and here is where the handle is coming and my capsule is sitting on the other foam like this so all this is the the harder foam and this one is the soft foam and my capsule is sitting here so it's kind of uh, sorry for this weird <laughs> drawing here but ah, okay and here is my uh, plastic part under the, the microphone so this is how we look now okay but I still have a fully open at grill maybe you can see through now so here on the side I want to apply other kind of foam this foam is created for speakers for the front grill and what this foam can do for you it's almost 100% transparent for the sound it's keeping out the dust and the moisture and the, the liquids and whatever so this is a really nice uh, foam for this kind of solution so again the name is Adam Hall and uh, the, the number is 019505 so look how much I got from the Toman let's put together yeah you can go in okay oh this is like made by Sennheiser I'm telling you guys uh, I know what uh, you will ask from me uh, sorry I forgot to make uh, before sound recording so fit yeah fit okay Ta -da. done so the microphone <coughs> acoustic modification is done so let me put this all this together now I have only one problem I cannot reach this plastic switch ah come on up look this is their solution for switch <laughs> oh my god of course I will clean it just make sure I have enough VD40 for this <laughs> microphone I'm telling you guys the best uh, contact cleaner for this old crusty rusty switches and pot meters is the VD40 nothing else can do better job with uh, with old metal look soon it will came shiny miny tada look how much shit and dust you can remove with the VD40 I'm sure somebody will say after 20 years oh you can get a cancer from that what I want to do if I press this switch I want to get much more or less signal from the microphone but I don't want to lose all the signal from my microphone why because accidentally maybe 
I can press this switch under the report. So if I kill all the signal from my microphone, then I lose the information. And then we have here this capacitor. And if I do a shortcut uh, between the, the, the two legs of the capacitor, doesn't matter how much uh, voltage I have on it, it will, it will create a really deep uh, pang in my, um, in my uh, mic preamp. So with this 10 ohm resistor, I will not get this and also I will not lose all the information. So I still have a signal 35 dB less. So what is mean? In the post-production, if I apply uh, a gate on my signal, then of course, because I have here minus 35 dB, my gate will switch on. So in the post-production, you will not hear nothing. But if I just press accidentally this switch, or <clears throat> I want to keep the information, but I want to show to my uh, subject, it's muted, then on a post-production I can repair the, the sound because 35 dB on 24-bit uh, uh, resolution um, uh, analog to digital conversion, you easily can uh, get back uh, the, the signal and you, yeah, you, you will lose a lot of details, but the information is there. Don't forget, this microphone is for human speech. So let me do this uh, 35 dB uh, pad in this microphone. Here is what I did, and it's very simple. Basically, they, in the past, they installed this tantalium capacitor, which is if it's get old, it's not uh, fully <laughs> functional anymore, like a capacitor. So, um, so here you can see uh, the switch output is going to the negative, but the input is connected before the capacitor. So I don't have here too much space to to install this kind of capacitor, which has a really nice sound. So <clears throat> basically I just turned it here and I shortened the leg a bit to make sure it uh, it's will not resonate. But of course I will apply some kind of glue under it. So and the bottom part is connected by this 10 ohm uh, resistor to the capacitor and the other, it's connected to the negative. Oh, I'm so stupid. It's happened with me many times. Ah, you know what's the problem now? I forgot the <laughs> foam from the bottom. Best, best, best microphone will be ever created by man. Oh. I want to make sure if the outside foam get the moisture. I don't want to modify the impedance of this microphone. So, and also it's helped me to keep these old wires on a place. So, yep. Maybe if I go like this, it will be better. I'm telling you guys, this will be the most, most high-end, <laughs> highest quality microphone ever created by man. It looks really professional. By the way, I don't know. Maybe there is, exists a glue which is exactly for this kind of foams. Please leave me a comment on the YouTube if you know some kind of glue for foam and metal, because I couldn't find it. So after 10 minutes of 
sucking <laughs> with this cable inside and uh, and with the um, with this XLR connector. So now I'm done. I'm ready. So now I will connect this microphone to the camera, and uh, I hope we will hear some kind of really nice. Uh, old, warm, but good uh, sound for human uh, speech. Okay, uh, we arrived to the end of uh, this video and uh, as you hear, uh, the microphone is performing really well. So let us uh, now try um, these uh, magic uh, switches. So first, let's uh, try this MS switch on uh, on the back. So no, without uh, S, yes. <laughs> so now I will go from the... Uh, 3 dB low pass to 6 dB low pass, which is will go up to 200 Hz. So here is the low pass filter. I know I'm switching back. Low pass filter, switching back. And uh, as you hear, it's not making any pick pook uh, noise or something. So let's uh, now try this other magic switch on the front because we planned to do like. Uh, like a mute, but in the safety case, if we want to restore the information, we can restore. So now I will speak into the microphone with the magic switch, but in a post-production, I will apply some kind of uh, gate. So no. Um, I can imagine you cannot hear nothing. So let's now try the other trick like in a post-production I will not apply the gate but I will increase the the gain of this channel so uh, because of that the, uh, if you remember we did a 35 dB uh, reduction on a signal so in a post-production if I bring back this uh, 35 dB we will hear the information so now I'm speaking into the microphone but uh, in this case uh, I will uh, restore back the muted signal. And the last uh, test what we have to do is um, uh, to check uh, the characteristic of this microphone how I want. So let's uh, now I'm speaking directly exactly to the front of this microphone. Now I'm speaking uh, to the side and now I'm speaking to the back. So as you hear, it's almost everything is disappeared uh, from the back. So yeah, I still uh, have what to do on this microphone. For example, I have to find a good solution for the for this uh, XLR uh, connector, and also I have to replace this inside the uh, Pioneer cable. And then I, I think uh, we did a good job. So. And maybe I will play a bit with the density of the front foam, but uh, really, now I'm really happy with this uh, microphone. Don't forget, I bought this microphone with other microphones in a, in a case, in a nice uh, case for 4 euro. So, thank you for watching. Catch you next time. Mute.